Do healings exist? Who are the faith giants who lived on this earth? Are miracles real? Welcome to God's Generals, presented by Bible historian David Stegman. Welcome once more to God's Generals. My name is David, and today we will be looking at John Bunyan. Now, John Bunyan was born in 1628 to Thomas and Margaret Bunyan uh, at Bunyan's End in a parish called Elstow in Bedfordshire. Bunyan's End is about halfway between the hamlet of Harridan and Elstow High Street. Bunyan's date of birth, though, is not known, but he was baptised on the 30th of November in 1628. The baptismal entry at the parish registered reading John the son of Thomas Bunyan, the 30th of November. The name Bunyan was spelt in many ways and various variants are recorded, but Bunyan is more known as a Norman or French name. There were Bunyans in Bedfordshire since 1199, and so Bunyan's father was a tinker and a mender of pots and pans and his grandfather was a chapman or small trader. The Bunyans owned land and properties in Elstode, and so Bunyan's origins were not quite as humble as one might assume uh, from various autobiographies about grace abounding or to the chief of sinners. As a child, Bunyan learned his father's trade as a tinker and was often uh, given some schooling but it was not known which school he attended. In the summer of 1644, Bunyan lost his mother and his sister Margaret. That autumn, shortly before and after his 16th birthday, Bunyan enlisted in the Parliamentary Ar Army when an edict demanded that 225 recruits from the town of Bedford. There are few details about his, available about his military service, which took place through the first stage of the English Civil War. Bunyan spent nearly three years in the army, leaving in 1647 and returning to his home and his trade as tinker. His father also remarried and had many more children, and Bunyan moved from Bunyan's End to a cottage in High Street. Within two years of leaving the army, Bunyan married, the name of his wife and exact date of marriage are also not known, but Bunyan did recall that his wife, a pious young woman, bought with her into a marriage two books that she would have, have, had inherited from her father, Arthur Dent's Plain uh, Man's Pathway to Heaven and Lewis Barrell's Practice of Priety. He also recalled that apart from these two books, the newlyweds possessed little, not having as much as household stuff as a dish or spoon between the two of them. The couple's first daughter, Mary, was born in 1650 and soon became apparent that she was blind. They would have three more children, Thomas, John and Elizabeth. By their own account, the Bunyan had, uh, as a youth, enjoyed bell ringing, dancing and playing games, including on Sunday, which was forbidden by the Puritans. He was a bit of a rebel. On Sunday, the vicar of Elstead preached a sermon about Sabbath breaking and Bunyan took the sermon to heart. That afternoon, as he was playing tip cat, a game with a small piece of wood and hit with a bat on Elsted's village green, he heard a voice from the heavens, Wilt thou leave thy sins and go to heaven, or have thy sins and go to hell? A few years were the time of intense spiritual conflict for Bunyan as he struggled with his doubts and fears over religion and guilt over the, what he saw as his state of sin. During this time, Bunyan, while on his travels as a thinker, often uh, would go to Bedford and pass through a group of women who was talking about spiritual matters on their doorstep. 
The women were in fact some of the founding members of the Bedford Free Church who had been attending the parish at Elstwood. Was so, he was so impressed with their talk that he joined their church. At that time, the nonconformist group was meeting in St. John's Church in Bedford under the leadership of John Guilford. At the instigation of other members of the congregation, Bunyan began to preach, both in the church and to the groups of people in the surrounding countryside. In 1656, having by this time moved his family from St. Cuthbert's in Bedford, he published his first book, Gospel Truth Opened, which was inspired by a dispute from the Ranters and Quakers. In 1658, Bunyan's wife died, leaving him with three, four small children, one of them blind. A year later, he married an 18-year-old woman named Elizabeth. The religious tolerance which had allowed Bunyan the freedom to preach began to be curtailed with the restoration of the monarchy in 1660. The members of the Bedford meeting were no longer able to meet in the St. John's Church, which they had been sharing with the Anglican congregation. That November, Bunyan was preaching a lower Samsell, a farm near the village of Harlington, when he was warned that a warrant uh, was out for his arrest. Deciding not to make his escape, he was arrested and brought before the local magistrate. Bunyan was arrested under the Conventicle Act of 1593, which made it an offence to attend a religious gathering other than that at a parish church with more than five people outside their family. The offence was punishable by three months in prison, followed by banishment or execution if the person uh, who failed to promise not to reoffend. The trial of uh, John Bunyan took place in January 61 at the quarter sessions of Bedford before the group magistrate, who later uh, would help draw up the Act of Uniformity. Bunyan, who had been held in prison since his arrest, was indicted for having devilishly and precariously abstained from coming to church to hear divine service, and having held several unlawful meetings and conventicles uh, to the great disturbance and distraction of good subjects of the kingdom. His, he was sentenced to three months imprisonment with transportation to follow if he, the end of his time he did not agree to the parish church and desist from preaching. We will be back soon. Watch the life story of the spiritual giants who lived on this earth. Smith Wigglesworth A.A. A. Allen Billy Graham Catherine Coolman William C. Moore Alexander Dowie John Wesley John G. Lake Maria Edwards David Yongicho Reinhard Bonke and many more Send your comments on kingsleyfrancis.org. Bunyan refused to agree to give up preaching. His period of imprisonment eventually extended to 12 years and brought great hardship to his family. Elizabeth, who had been strenuously attempts to obtain his release, had been pregnant with her husband when her husband was arrested and she subsequently gave birth prematurely to a stillborn child. Bunyan spent 12 years imprisonment in Bedford County Jail, which stood at the corner of High Street and Silver Street. There were, however, occasions when he was allowed out of prison, depending on the jailers and the mood of the authorities at the time. He was able to attend the Bedford meeting and even preach. His daughter Sarah was born uh, during his imprisonment 
and another child of his second marriage, Joseph, was born after his release in 1672. In prison, Bunyan had a copy of the Bible and John Fox's Book of Martyrs, as well as other writing materials. He also had a company of other prisoners, preachers, who had been imprisoned in the jail with him. He wrote Grace Abounding and started working on Pilgrim's Progress as well as penning many other gospel tracts. In 1671, while in prison, he was chosen as a pastor of the Bedford Meeting. And in March uh, of 72, the king issued a decree of indulgence which suspended penal laws against nonconformists. Bunyan was freed in May 1672 and immediately obtained a license to preach under the Declaration of Indulgence. Following his release from jail in 1672, Bunyan probably did not return to his former occupation as a tinker. Instead, he devoted himself to writing and preaching. He continued as a pastor at the Bedford Meeting and travelled many other places to many other counties on horseback preaching, becoming known affectionately as Bishop Bunyan. The Pilgrim's Progress was published in 1678 by Nathaniel Ponder and immediately became popular throughout probably making more money for the publisher than its authors. Two events marred Bunyan's life during the 1670s. Firstly, he became embroiled in a scandal with a young woman uh, when going to preach in 1674. A member of the Bedford meeting and riding as a pillion on his horse accused him uh, and of many things. The daughter initially suspected uh, of poisoning him, though the coroner found that he had died of natural causes in relation to her father. In 1676 and uh, 7, he underwent a second internment imprisonment, probably reversed of refusing to attend a church parish. The second imprisonment lasted six months. In 1688, Bunyan made a detour to Reading, uh, Berkshire, where he uh, to turn and resolve a quarrel between a father and son. He then continued on to London. And while gone the way, he was struck by a storm and fell ill with a fever. The gentleman later died in that day on the 30th and 1st of August and is buried in a tomb in Bun Hill Fields. Bunyan's estate at his death was worth 42 pounds and nine shillings. Today the equivalent would be 5,000 pounds. He published many gospel tracts about the uh, Quakers and the writers. Uh, many also of his 42 titles were published after he preached and passed away. In 1692, a gentleman by the name of Charles Doe, also a friend of Bunyan in the later years, brought out a collaboration of a uh, collection of the author's works, which included 12 unpreviously uh, published titles. Bunyan is best remembered for his Pilgrim's Progress, a book which we gained public, published popularity immediately upon publishing. By 1692, four years after the author's publishing of it, had established 100,000 copies printed in England. Uh, and many other editions in France, Holland, and New England, and in Welsh. By 1938, 250 years after Bunyan's death, more than 1,300 uh, editions of the book had been printed. During the 18th century, Bunyan's unpolished style fell out of favour, but his popularity returned with Romanticism, uh, a poet by the name of Robert Southey, written uh, a lengthy appreciative doc, uh, biography in 1830, which was to accompany an edition of Pilgrim's Progress. Bunyan's reputation was further enhanced by his evangelical revival and became a favourite author of the Victorians. 
Although the popularity, popular interest in Bunyan waned uh, during the second half of the 20th century, uh, academic interest in the writer has increased and the Oxford University Press brought out a new edition of his works beginning in 1976. Many authors have been influenced by Bunyan, including C.S. Lewis, Nathaniel Horne, including Charles Dickens and George Bernard Shaw. Uh, Bunyan's work, in particular Pilgrim's Progress, has reached a wider audience through the stage productions of film, TV and radio, and a stage work by Ralph Williams, which the composer styled a morality based on Pilgrim's Progress. It was first performed in the Royal Opera House in 1951 and revived in 2012. Though he was a preacher, his legacy remains through his writings, an example that not only uh, preachers or preaching elite could make the list of God's generals, but also those who wrote and printed many books. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and share with others. Hit the notification bell and see you on the next one.